So good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. It's nice to have you guys here tonight um, for our preview of our gorilla trek coming up in, in August to Uganda. Um, we're going to talk a lot about the gorilla trek, the chimpanzee, chimpanzee trek. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our other two safaris coming up. Um, but I want to make this a free form open exchange. So usually, um, thank, usually we mute everyone, but we're a small group tonight. So you can go ahead and just ask me questions as you go. I will answer them as best I can. You know, I've done the gorilla trip two times. So this will be my third, third group to the gorillas. Um, so um, away we go. I'm going to share my screen. And to make it better for you, it's it's best if you guys would um, close your video. And here we go. All right, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yes. Right. yes. If you have questions, I'm not able to look at the chat while I am um, while I am um, talking here. So just go ahead and stop me if you have a question. And here we go. So welcome to our Gorilla Trek preview. Uh, da, 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 trying to get things going. So welcome all of you. I know a lot of you have been with us before on the webinar. Some of you have been on classes and trips, but I love to have you all. And we're going to have a great time on this adventure. So what are we? What's the goal for tonight? You know. Oh, geez, this really isn't what I thought it would be. Or this sounds awesome. I'm going to sign up right now. You know, that's the whole goal for tonight, because I want everyone who comes on a safari or an adventure or a trip with me to love it. And the best way that I found to make it work is to tell you the absolute God awful truth at the beginning, maybe scare you a little bit more than it'll be in real life. But I want you to be prepared so that you get what you expect when you go. And, you know, We've been doing the trips here at the Creative Photo Academy for 30 plus years, and everybody who goes with us loves their experience, and we found that the upfront training really helps. So we've talked about in the pregame a little bit tonight, we have three safaris going to Africa this July and August. You may attend one or two or three of them. It's up to you. There are There is space available on all three. And if you wanted to join us, you are welcome to, the, to do it. And for many of us, an African safari is absolutely positively a bucket list trip. I've been able to fill this bucket 16 times over the last 15 years. It's been an awesome ride and I love doing it with you because every single one of our people who goes with us says it's their favorite vacation ever. They have the best experience that they've ever had on any safari or any vacation. They love coming with us to Africa because we have an amazing time. We stay in great lodges. We get you close to the animals and we have fun. And the safari you choose with us this year in 2023 depends on what animals you want to see and how you want to see the animals. Tonight, we're going to talk about the chimpanzees and the gorillas and how we get to see them and what that experience is like. Now, our safari team, you are meeting me, Mark Coleman. I'm hoping that Oscar is going to be able to join us tonight. He was in the middle of running between a couple of things. Os uh, excuse me. Maurice Oketch is my contact from Africa. Maurice is an American citizen. He lives here in, in um, Canyon country. He was born and raised in Kenya and moved here after college. And he is my contact with Africa. Our interface in Africa. For those of you who come on the safari portion will be Oscar Mwagi. Oscar is works with private safaris in, in Kenya, and he arranges the arrangements in Kenya, our person on the ground in Kenya, and it's going to just be awesome to, to deal with Oscar and Maurice. When you register, you will talk to Maurice, and Maurice will actually take your money. He's the one who you'll arrange payments with. If you have any questions, more than what I can answer, Maurice is going to be the one to talk to. You see me here with Amos Wakesa. Amos is the owner of the lodges that we're going to be staying with in Uganda, and he runs Great Lakes Safaris. 
and they're the ones who we're, we're going to be staying with and traveling with in Uganda. Hopefully we'll meet Amos, he'll come and visit us one day, but we'll be with Robert every day. Robert will be our contact. He will pick us up at the airport, be with us every minute of the day when we're out and about in Uganda. And he is, he's a great guy. I've been with him the other two times we've been to, to Uganda. Awesome leader, very knowledgeable about the animals and will just get it done for us. I, I love dealing with Robert. He's an awesome guy. So reservations and logistics questions, you're gonna talk to Maurice. And that is in the, his name is in the email I sent you today to when you signed up or, or when you clicked in to, for tonight. If you have questions about photo stuff, call me. If you, if you ladies want to have a women's perspective, you're welcome to talk to my wife, who is not a photographer. Um, I will put you in touch with some of our customers, our clients who've gone with us before. If you want their point of view on the whole thing, um, we're 100% open. It's an open book here, and we want everyone to be satisfied and excited about going with us. So as I talked, we have three safaris going to Africa this year and they're back to back to back. So I will be in Africa for months. So the ultimate photo safari is in the end of July. The Uganda Gorilla Trek, the beginning of, the beginning of um, August, and then the middle of August, our Kenya photo safari. So we're gonna do a preview on the ultimate safari on Monday night. And on Tuesday night, we're gonna do a preview of the Kenya photo safari. Um, I will send all of you the recordings of all three of these on Wednesday if you can't keep up with us. And like I said, if anybody has any questions, let me know. So people are asking me, how do I choose? Number one, the schedule. So when can you go? Number two, what animals or what experience are you interested in? Because there's three completely different experiences. And what do you desire? I have to tell you all that don't wait. If you're physically capable of going, go now. Because over the last year, I have had five or six of our regular students and, and adventure participants who never went to Africa and now they are physically unable to go. Mm. Don't wait, you know, and, 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 and I can't stress that enough. You know, sure, it's a little bit tight on the money. Sure, it's a little bit tight on the schedule. But go, you'll never, ever regret it. Never. So the Uganda Gorilla Trek, $7,900 per person, double occupancy. If you wanted to get a single room instead of a double room, it's $1,500 additional. There's a $2,000 deposit due now. Um, because we're getting close, we're only four months away, the payments are going to be accelerated. That includes lodging and meals, the safari guides, the park, the internal airfare from Entebbe, Uganda. So you have to get yourself to Entebbe, Uganda and get home from there. What's not included is that international airfare, the visas, visa is very easy to get. It's 75 or hundred bucks. It's an online visa application to Uganda. Very easy to do, same as it is with Kenya. You need travel and medical insurance. Some of the meals are not included. Alcohol, soft drinks, laundry, and tip are not included. So we try to make it is as inclusive as possible. So the gorillas that we are going to see are in Uganda. So you, Uganda is a British protectorate was in, independent in 1962, 40 plus million people. English is their official language. Every single person you meet in Uganda will speak English. But like all Africans, most Africans speak at least three languages. They speak English, they speak Swahili, and they speak their what they call their mother tongue or their tribal language. So the tribal language is what they speak at home. Swahili is what they speak to other Africans. And they speak English in school, at work, in business, and to us, of course. So there's no worry about the language when we're in Uganda. So this is what Uganda looks like. It's on the northwest corner of Lake Victoria. It's part of the East African community. It borders Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and the Congo. So 
where are we going and what are we doing in Uganda? So we're going to see the mountain gorillas. And the mountain gorillas are down in this little mountain range in Virunga in the bottom corner of Uganda that borders Rwanda and Congo. There are between 11 and 1200 mountain gorillas left on the earth. And they all live in this tiny little red circle that I've drawn on the map. 50% of those gorillas live in Uganda in the Bwindi impenetrable forest. And that's why we're going to Uganda because the lodging is great, it's convenient, and there are many, many gorillas. And we have a choice in Bahoma of four different gorillas to gorilla families to hike to each and every day so we can match the ability of our group, the, our hiking ability to be able to get to the gorillas. So you have to fly. So you can fly if you're coming, starting your African safari in Uganda with us, you are going to fly from Europe to Entebbe, Uganda. I am a Delta flyer, so KLM is a Delta partner. I fly from the United States to Amsterdam on KLM as a Delta code share, and then from Amsterdam to Entebbe, Uganda. When you sign up or you have interest in signing up, I will send you the recommended air flights. It's very easy to get there. If you are coming with us on the Kenya safari, we will be flying from Nairobi, Kenya, to Entebbe, Uganda. Um, very easy flight. And from Nairobi to Entebbe is like flying from LA to San Francisco. So Val, can you mute your microphone, please? Thank you. Any questions about the air flight? The flight to Montreal every night, they would be distant, they all disappear. They would all disappear. I have a question, Mark. Um, sure, go ahead, Jean. Since some of you, including you, will be coming from Kenya, and some of us that are maybe only doing the gorilla trip will be uh -huh. separately, you mentioned that um, does Maurice meet us at the airport regardless? No. Robert or one of his people will meet us at the airport. Oh, Robert. Yeah, I knew you said someone, but it. Yeah. No, no, you're you will be met at the airport okay. and then and then brought to our hotel. So okay. I I like to fly through Amsterdam because Schiphol Airport is easy and efficient. It's mm -hmm. a simple trip from the US to Amsterdam. You don't have to spend the night in Amsterdam. It's usually a two or three hour layover, which is not that long. It's convenient and it just works. So, and our Amsterdam flight arrives in Entebbe at about 10 o'clock at night. They, and our flight from, from, um, from Nairobi will arrive about 10 o'clock at night. And it just depends on the air schedule. I haven't checked what the Kenya air schedule is right now, but we'll pick you up, take you to the, our hotel where we'll spend the night on the first night. So does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. And then, so we arrive, and I don't remember the days. Don't count me. Don't, don't um, hold me to this. So let's say we arrive Monday night at ten o'clock. We'll spend Monday night in the hotel in Entebbe. Then we'll go back to the airport. Actually, we'll go we'll go back to the airport in Entebbe in the morning, and we'll take a short flight, about an hour flight to Kasese, and then a couple hour drive from the airport in Kasese up to Kibale National Forest where the chimpanzees are, have our, the next day, so that's Monday we arrive, Tuesday is a travel day, we get into Kasese just after lunch, we have lunch, we relax, we go swimming, go for a walk in the forest. One of the great things about our hotel in Kibale is Kibale National Forest has the most primates of any place in the world. And there are primates 
around the hotel. And you can actually do a primate walk, a bird walk, right on the hotel property in Kabale. So that's on Tuesday. Wednesday morning, we get up. We go see the chimpanzees. And we hike with the chimpanzees in the morning and then have the afternoon in Kabale off. Wednesday morning, we get up. We drive back to the airport in Kasese. We, we fly to Kabale and then drive a couple hours. And it's, again, a 40-minute flight to Kabale and then drive a couple hours up into the mountains to Bahoma, get there middle of the afternoon, have a rest, do some sightseeing in, in, in Bahoma. And then the next morning, so that would be Thursday, Thursday and Friday, we would go to hike to see the gorillas. Then Saturday morning, we would get back, get up, fly back from Kabale back to Entebbe. And those of us going to Kenya would go to Kenya. Those of us going home would go back home. So that's how the schedule would work. And this is all written down. I can send you all this if you need. Um, so we're going to Kasese because that is the portal for Kibale National Park where the chimpanzees are. And, and Kibale is the portal to windy impenetrable forest where the mountain gorillas are. And it's an amazing location. I have plenty of pictures to share with you. So you now the questions that everyone has is the travel. We tried to answer that. The weather, what is the weather at this time? Down in the valley in, in Tebe, it's 75 or 80 degrees in the daytime in, in August and 50s at night. It's about 10 degrees cooler up in, in Kabale and in Bahoma. So when we're, because we're up in the mountains, we're at about 4,000, 5,000 feet elevation. So it's about 65, 70 during the day and in the high 40s to mid 50s in the evening. So you're always gonna wanna bring a sweater and a raincoat with me. The lodging is phenomenal. The food is phenomenal. On the Gorilla Trek, the vehicles are not important. Safety and animal wise, that's more for the safari part we'll talk about on Monday or Tuesday. Um, but anybody have any questions about these things? All right. So what do you pack? I mean, you don't need a lot of clothes. You need to be light and nimble. You know, a, you need, you're required to bring a soft duffel bag. And what I bring is a, a, not a small gym bag, but one of the larger gym bags, like you would, you know, go to the gym with. And in there, you've got three sets of clothing for your safari or your gorilla hike. A, something comfortable for camp you know some of the guys bring shorts and a t-shirt some of the ladies bring a nice sundress something they're comfortable in something fun a swimsuit a light jacket a raincoat for the gorilla portion we need hiking boots or hiking shoes and gaiters um, we'll talk about that in a minute but for the safari part any 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 shoes, I like heavier duty shoes because I just feel more comfortable with a little bit of support on my feet. So this is what I look like when I'm on safari. Long pants, long shirt, why? I want protection from the sun, I want protection from insects, um, sturdy shoes, a hat. This is also almost exactly how I look when I hike for the gorillas and the chimpanzees. We'll talk about that in a minute. So Gene had a question about your camera gear. It's all up to you. What do you want to bring? Do you want to bring a cell phone? Do you want to bring a big zoom camera? Do you want to bring an interchangeable lens camera with a super zoom on it? Do you want to bring a whole kit? You know, this is what I bring on Safari. Now, would I like all of you to buy a kit just like this? Absolutely. I own a camera store but I understand that that's impossible. So another question that you guys have is, so Mark, we bring all this stuff. Do we bring that on the gorillas? No, we don't bring that on the gorillas and the chimpanzee. We bring a smaller kit. And what do you do? We are able to check a bag with, with Amos and his team at Great Lakes Safaris 
and leave a bag behind. So if you have extra clothing, extra camera kit, you know, you're going to leave your camera kit behind. So when we're out with the gorillas and the chimps, what do I bring? I have two cameras with two lenses, 124 to 70, 170 to 200. Because with the gorillas and the chips, chimps, it's dark. So I'm ISO 6,400, 12,000, 25,000, one thousandth of a second at f2.8. And that's how you photograph the chimps and the gorillas. That's what it looks like. Questions, anybody? So here is Maurice and I when we went to go plan the gorillas and the chimp expedition. So this behind us is the Aerolink plane we fly on. It's a Cessna um, uh, cavalcade, amazing airplane. It's the workhorse of Africa. Um, 20 passengers, pilot and co-pilot, amazingly safe plane. That's Maurice. We're having a cocktail after our chimpanzee hike and just having a great time together because you'll find that Uganda is amazingly beautiful. In the central highlands of Uganda, where we'll be, this is the countryside, and this is one of their crater lakes. They have these lakes in the old volcanoes that are beautiful. We'll stop, we'll photograph, we'll see them, we'll visit, we'll see wildlife around the, ar along the road. This is the, cr the African crown crane, the national bird of Uganda. Just a little bee eater in the tree right beside the road as we were driving. We'll see the local people. These are the banana farmers taking their bananas to market. And these guys have about 700 pounds of bananas strapped to their bicycle. And I got to give it a try and I can barely move the bicycle. It's so heavy, but they do it every single day and go 10 or 12 miles with their bikes like this to getting their bananas to market. And this is just what we'll see. In, Af in Africa, in Uganda, we'll meet these amazing people who live. They're all farmers where we are, and they're farming bananas and coffee and tea for the most part. Um, you'll see some melons and, and that kind of stuff. We'll meet the children. This is it. I actually got out and played soccer with them at one of the villages and had an amazing time. And just, it's a great experience. The girls that are right, that were right next to our hotel. Um, we walked around there, took a little tour of the area and got to meet the girls after school. They're out playing and I got to make their photograph. And they're just lovely people and they all want to meet you. They're very friendly and it's just an amazing experience to get out and meet the people when we travel. So we'll be in um, Toyota, Land, uh, Toyota uh, Land Cruisers converted for safari. Um, these are... Maurice and Amos work together to put this together. So we have Maurice's uh, names on them. It's just so awesome. Our first stop, any questions? So our first stop for wildlife in Uganda will be Kabali National Park. And Kabali National Park is the home to the most primates in any place on the, on the planet. You will see all kinds of monkeys in and around the hotel, and we will get to walk and see the chimps. This is Primate Lodge, where we'll be staying. It's a beautiful, beautiful lodge. So if you can see the cursor, this is the office, the gift shop. This is the dining room. This is the bar. I'm standing in the... Um, in, in kind of the, the rumpus room, game room, so to speak. It's all open, it's exposed, it's outside because the weather here is beautiful, it's amazing. They have a fire pit where they have a fire each and every evening. You can go sit out by the fire and have a cocktail. We'll, sometimes the locals will come and dance and sing for us. And the, the rooms are behind us, just to the left, Right, there's a pathway here that takes you back to the rooms and they're all little bungalows with one or two rooms in each of the bungalows. It's an amazing location. I love staying at the Primate, Primate Lodge. They take great care of us. Vincent is the manager there. He'll be there when we get there in July. 
in, in August rather, and it'll just be amazing. So, you know, here's the campfire at night and you can see folks are sitting. This is the rumpus room here. That's, that's the, the, the main office and the bar is right to the right here. Um, just out relaxing, having fun. You know, one of my favorite things to do when we go on these safaris is to sit by the campfire with an adult beverage with our laptops and look at the pictures we shot during the day and see who got what and what you saw because we're all gonna see the same stuff, but we're all gonna see it differently. And that's one of the funs of going on safari, fun parts of going on safari. The next morning we will wake up and walk. It's about a quarter of a mile walk from our hotel to the chimpanzee reserve headquarters where we will meet our chimpanzee guides. We will get a briefing on safety, what we're gonna see, how we're gonna do it, all those things. They'll check to make sure you have the right footwear, you have the right, the, you have water with you, you have a raincoat. And if you want at this time, you can hire a porter, which I highly recommend. It's 20 bucks and your porter will carry your bag for you to the chimpanzees. So you don't have to carry anything. It's about a mile walk generally to the chimpanzees. It's relatively flat. And the great thing is 20 bucks to these people is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money to us. And that makes a huge difference to their family that they've earned $20 today because that will feed them for about six weeks. It's hard to believe. But we'll get our briefing, we'll hire our porters, and sometimes we'll walk right from the chimpanzee center or we'll get in the car and drive a couple miles and then we will walk through the forest to see the chimpanzees. And this is what it looks like. Sometimes on one of the trips we walked, we came back on the road. You know, it just depends on where we go because they never know where the, well, they know exactly where the chimpanzees are. The chimpanzees go where they like, but, and they have trackers with them all the time to keep an eye on them, but we don't know where we're going to go to see them. So the chimpanzees are an easy walk, about a mile, usually each way, 20 to 30 minutes. It's a great photo opportunity. And for me, we do the chimpanzees first because it's a great practice to get your kit and your technique down because the kit and the technique are exactly the same for the chimps and the gorillas. So this is our practice day for the gorillas getting photos of the chimps. So these are with the 24 to 70 lens and the 70 to 200 lens. So most of these that you're seeing are 70 to 200, thousandth of a second at f2.8, ISO 6400, 12,800, 6400. And we're watching the behavior. These chimps are not tame. They are habituated to humans, which means they are used to every single day from 10 o'clock in the morning till about 11 o'clock in the morning, having a group of humans, our group of eight or 16, with them for an hour. And so they just go on with their daily behavior for this hour. And they allow us to visit their family, to see them in their natural environment, enjoy that, and make pictures. That's what we're doing. And you're in their environment. They, they're there doing their thing. And we're able to photograph. We'll ab we're able to capture these magic moments with the chimpanzees. And it's absolutely amazing. And I'll say this about the gorillas as well. You can actually have a conversation with the chimpanzees with your eyes. Now, we're not allowed to vocalize. We can't like beat our chest and stuff like that. We're told not to do that. But just with your eyes, it's not like looking at your cat where you look in their eyes and there's nothing there. You look in the eyes of the chimpanzee and it looks like you're looking at another human being. They comprehend us. They understand us. They recognize 
they're the guides and the porters who go back all the time. They say that they even recognize you if you have been to see them before. That's our day with the chimpanzees. Then we'll come back, we'll rest, we'll reconnect, we'll travel the next day up in, we'll go farther south into, into Uganda, up into the mountains of Bahoma, to the windy impenetrable forest. Does anybody have any questions for me? I must be explaining this stuff pretty darn good because there's no questions. So windy impenetrable forest is just as it says. And you can see there's always a lot of steam and mist in windy because it rains a little bit and then the mist is there. It's beautiful. It's just fantastic. This is the deck at the Mahogany Springs Lodge where we'll sit and have a cocktail. Inside here is the dining room where we'll have dinner. And this is chimp. I mean, this is Gorilla Mountain. This is where the gorillas live. And you can see from the deck of our hotel where we're going to go tomorrow to see the gorillas. It's amazing. So picture on the left is the dining room. Picture on the right is one of the rooms at Mahogany Springs Lodge. It's, it's a great spot to go. Um, I, I just love it there. The manager is an awesome guy. Simon is his name, and, and just they take great care of us. The meals are fantastic. The drinks are cold. You know, what, what else do you need, right? You can eat outside if you, if some nights they'll set us up outside. It just depends on the weather and the temperature as to what's going on. And then the next day, we're going to go up to the Gorilla Center. You know, just like with the chimpanzees, we'll have a briefing and then we'll be divided into groups according to our hiking ability and then be sent on an hour or a two hour walk to see the gorillas. And I'll tell you, gang, the gorilla walk is, I mean, for me, it's not bad at all. It's easy, but it's very steep. It's straight up because you're climbing the side of the mountain. and with a little bit of practice, everyone can do it. So we do, I do gorilla training walks, you know, with the group, though this is the gorilla group from 2022, we did training hawk hikes every Sunday, I mean, one Sunday a month to get people ready. I ask that you walk two to four times a week, a couple miles, climb what you can climb to get ready to go see the gorillas because it's lots of fun. So we go to the gorilla center, you meet the gorilla rangers, we get briefed up, we get trained, we get split into our groups. So here, is, this is Maurice and I on the left, we're in the Christmas group. The groups are named for the silverback who runs each family. And that is our ranger next to me in the camo and two of the porters on his left who will take our stuff for us up. You'll notice that the Africans are all dressed in heavy because it's about 55 degrees. For me, that's okay with a long sleeve shirt. I'm good to go. This is Wilson. He was one of our gorilla rangers. And you can see the logo on his hat, UWA, that's Uganda Wildlife Authority. So this is like their national park service. So he is a ranger. They wear military style uniforms but they're amazing guys. So here we are in Windy Impenetrable Forest. We will be in Bahoma. And why do we like Bahoma? Because the town is nice and there are four groups of gorillas within an easy walk of our gorilla center in Bahoma. Some people, some groups will walk straight from the gorilla center. Some groups will, from the gorilla center, get into the car and drive 15 or 20 minutes to a second location. Sometimes you'll have to drive 30 or 40 minutes to get to the location where you're going to start, start your hike to find the gorillas. The gorillas are tracked every day. The rangers know where the gorillas are. So we're not trying to find them. They know where they are. 
So the, gor the, the gorillas have a ranger with them all day long. The ranger stays with them until they go to sleep at night. They mark that location. And the next morning, the rangers go back to that location early in the morning as the sun's getting up and the gorillas are right there because they're still sleeping. And then once they get up in the morning, they follow them as they move, as they feed, as they do their, de do their deal. And they're on the radio back to us to tell us where we're going to find the gorillas. So we're not hunting to find the gorillas. We just have to hike to get to where the gorillas are. Does anybody have any questions? So this is my gorilla outfit, and it looks very much the same as my as my safari outfit. Hat, long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants, long pants, boots. I do wear gaiters with the gorillas. And why? Because you're walking through the forest and we're afraid of insects crawling up our legs. So just wearing gaiters, boots, they give you a hiking stick at the gr gorilla center. If you wanna bring walking poles, you're welcome to do that. I just have so much stuff. I don't want to carry the, my walking poles. So I just grab one of their walking sticks. It helps going up the hill and down the hill as we're hiking to see the gorillas. So this is what the hike looks like. We are hiking through the forest on a trail and it's beautiful, but you can see it's steep. It's, you know, a steep cliff, a st not a cliff, a steep hill. And you switch back up the side of the hill to get to where the gorillas are. And some walks, we walk an hour, sometimes we walk in two hours. The longest I've been is about two and a half hours to get to see the gorillas. And you know what? It is absolutely worth every second. So you can see here with our group, you have our ranger and we'll have two rangers with us, one at the front and one at the back. And then in the gray outfits, the gray jumpsuits are our porters and they will carry your bags for you. Once again, $20 a day for the porter. It's awesome. Yes, was there a question? And this is what it looks like hiking. We're just hiking through the forest, hiking through the forest. There's Augustine, he was our ranger last time. Awesome guy, he remembered me from before. And this is our group in 2022. We're walking to find the gorillas. And you can see Karen there, long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants, gaiters, boots. There's Michelle and Peggy, right? We just had a great time out finding. And you can see here the porter is carrying Karen's bag. So she doesn't have to carry anything. All you have to do is carry your camera or you can put the camera in the bag and let them carry it for you. If you can't or don't want to walk up the hill, you can get a gorilla helicopter. It costs four to $500 and four guys will carry you up and down the hill. So there's no worry if you don't feel like you're physically able. You know, in Africa, a little bit of money makes miracles happen. So here you can take the helicopter and they will carry you up to the gorillas and back. Last time we had three people in our group opt for the helicopter. They didn't want to walk. And it wasn't that they couldn't, but they just didn't want to walk, so they hired the helicopter. Sometimes our walk will start out going through the village. We'll see the local children. We'll walk through their farmland on the trail. We'll see the tree, the tea, the coffee, the bananas, the beans, all growing on the hillside as we're heading up to get to the gorilla forest. And here we are. We made it to the gorillas. We made it to the jungle. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how close you get. So that's Maurice. You guys saw Maurice before. That's another one of the people with us. And see, he's got his cell phone. So Gene, don't worry about it. And there's one of the gorillas. They teach us how to behave. Jim, can I ask you, I, I see the people with <clears throat> masks. Do we need to wear masks to protect the gorillas? So in 2021 and 2022, we had to wear masks. I don't know what the current rules are, Gene. So they have masks in the, so we were required to wear the masks. So, you know, it's just, if they require the masks, and, but it's only when you're with the gorillas. 
So, you know, you hike without a mask and then they'll tell you, okay, guys, here we are, masks on. How close do you get? So there goes the silverback. Usually the gorilla families have 10 to 20 individuals in them, and we may see all of them or a few of them, but this is how close you get. And it's so amazing. It's not scary at all. They're so gentle. It's just, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Here we go. You can see how close. This is me. Maurice took this video last time. Look at how close she came to me. Pretty cool, huh? Sorry, apologize. So these are the pictures we're taking. So these are 24 to 70, 70 to 200 lens. And this mother with the baby, she walked right next to us. You know, a couple of the group could have actually touched her if they wanted. Now, you're not allowed to. If they touch you, it's one thing, but you can't reach out to them. And here we are. So there's Jim and Peter and Evelyn. And look at, they're interacting with the gorilla. You know, they're seeing us where, you know, you can, you interact with them. They respond to you. So there's Evelyn with a baby. And this is probably a, a two-year-old in the tree right there. And here's the little baby that I made the picture of. I didn't get to get the shot of her in the little tree, but here she was on top of the tree. Another mother with a baby and this mother was eating flowers. She was just grabbing flowers out of the trees and eating them. That's because they're vegetarians. They eat, they eat about eight hours a day. And then we made it back. We got back, you have a little celebration, you have a drink of water, wash your hands, back in the car, and we head back to the Mahogany Springs Lodge. You freshen up, have lunch. And then if we want, we can go down to the village in Bahoma and meet the people. And I love to take the village tour in Bahoma. It's a small little village. And we will go meet the, the women at Ride for a Woman. It's a women's co-op. So you will get to meet Evie. She's the founder. She's become friends with us um, because she does amazing work. And Siobhan, her, her manager, her, her head assistant, this is a co-op for women who need a job, women who are abused. And one of the big problems in Africa is the women get married. They're 16 years old. They have four children. And then the husband leaves to go find a younger wife. So here they are, they're 21 years old, no education, with four children and no job. So Evie decided in her village, she would find a place for them to work. And so they do these amazing crafts, they're beautiful, and it's a woman's co-op where they all work together and build these amazing items mostly cloth or basketry um, quilts. And you'll see here, there's their shop and we'll go shopping. Um, they made custom orders for us last time, sent a bunch of stuff back here to the States. It was just an amazing experience. And then they came and sang and danced for us that, that night at the lodge and entertained. And it was just so much fun. And they're so warm and beautiful people. Um, there's my wife, Cheryl, with Evie after we were leaving and 
you know, there were four of us in the Jeep. The Jeep was full of stuff that we had bought to bring home. Um, I still use one of the bags I got there. Peter got a custom shirt made. Kelly had a bunch of baskets made for her serving dishes at home. And it was just an amazing experience. And I can't tell you how good it makes you feel to be able to make a difference in these people's lives like that for such a great cause. Um, some of us in the afternoon after our, after our gorilla hike, well, there's a beautiful waterfall a couple miles away from the lodge in Bahoma. We can go hike and do that. It's a lot of fun. It just depends on what we want to do. So the gorilla trek, two luxury locations, one day with the chimps, two days with the gorilla, support for the local community, an awesome experience in Uganda. Does anybody have any questions? Because Monday night, we will talk about the ultimate safari. Tuesday night, we'll talk about the Kenya safari. I realistically can't wait to go because Africa is amazing. Amazing. I, I just, I love going. I love sharing it with you all and being out on safari because we have an amazing time. We make amazing pictures and just have so much fun. And a couple questions. Do you, sure, Jean, go ahead. Um, Maurice advise us on like how much cash we need and where we exchange our money. Oh, and that sort of you don't stuff. exchange money at all. You don't need to exchange money. Oh, like so we just take US American dollars. dollars in the packet. It is completely laid out as to how much money you need to bring. And I bring plenty of cash in case you run out. Um, shopping at the village in Bahoma, they will take credit cards, Visa, MasterCard. They won't take American Express. Um, but like I said, the only thing we need cash for, we need cash for the tips. We need cash for what we pay, what we buy. Um, the hotels will take credit cards for your laundry and your alcohol. Um, Mark, do you do these every year or? No, oh. we do different things every year so 2023 we will do kenya and the gorilla safari 2024 we are doing tanzania and i haven't thought about 2025 yet okay. as to where we'll go okay because i'm going to be in tanzania in august so that's Great. why i can't go do your uh-huh wonderful schedule but um i would love to be able to do that schedule sometime yeah, so it, it's it's an awesome, it's awesome. And so if you wanted to, so when is your trip in to Tanzania, Susan? Um, uh, About August 1st through about the time of the Gorilla Trek. Okay. Before that, I'm going to be in Croatia. Okay, so. great. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so it's not going to work for you this time. No. That's, that's okay. Don't worry about it. So who has questions, other questions? Go ahead, you guys can open your microphones, open your cameras. I will answer all questions. Gary, Steven, anybody? Do the lodges we stay at, do they have like ensuite bathrooms? Yes, no, yes, no, it, it's, Gene, it's all first class. It is okay. not camping at all, not at all. So you have a toilet, you have a shower, you have a houseboy who takes care of you. And whether it's a man or a woman, it depends on the place. You know, they bring you your coffee in the morning. They will carry your bag to the front for you. It is absolutely amazing. There's nothing, there's no roughing it at all. But we still have to drink bottled water, right? Absolutely. Keep you can't even brush your teeth. You can't even brush your teeth with the tap water. <laughs> So, but they bring you bottled water. You have, and most of the lodges now have gone to filtration systems. They don't bring you bottled water anymore. So there is a, there is a, you know, a pitcher of water in your living room and in your bathroom. And that's the water you drink. And that's the water you use to brush your teeth with. I mean, you shower in a shower, you wash your hands with, you wash your hands. Um, I ask everyone to bring a, metal a water bottle with them and that's what we fill up 
from the bottled water in, in the lodge, and that's what we carry with us every day. Other questions? And Gene, just to let you know, most of the places that I go with the group, you can't drink the water. I mean, we're going to Thailand in, in September, can't drink the water there. Cuba, you can't drink the water there. Vietnam, you can't drink the water there. I mean, you can drink the water in Japan, you can drink the water in Croatia, you can drink the water in it Italy, but most of the cool places that we go photograph, you can't drink the water. You just get over it. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to check. Yeah, in the so you get from me a packet that's about 30 pages when when we're getting ready to go that goes over all that stuff. And I will remind you as we're getting off the plane, they will tell you as you're checking into the hotel, don't drink the water. Because every now and then somebody makes a mistake and drinks the water and they end up going on a diet for a couple of days. So when are you going to Vietnam? Uh, Viet we're going to Thailand in September. Oh, okay. October, sorry, October. I have one spot left for Thailand. Any other questions? Anybody? Barbara, Bing, Bruce, Jack, Marcella, Joe, Val, questions? Absolutely, you can use prime lenses instead of zoom. That's 100% up to you. Your camera kit is your camera kit. Anybody else? All right. How many of you think you're gonna sign up for the gorillas this time? <laughs> so Marcella, one of these days, I know. You know, I talked about that earlier, gang, we're not getting any younger. I have six of my people who wanted to come to Africa this year. They were waiting and they're not able to come anymore. Health problems, they're just not able to come. Don't wait. You know, if money's a little tight, find a way. If time's a little tight, find a way. You know, and I've just told, I'm just, I'm really on to this telling people not to wait go let's go right now monday night we're going to talk about the ultimate safari that's the last week of, of july and then tuesday night we'll talk about the kenya photo safari that's the second week in august and all of these trips are linked so that you can do one or two or all three of them and that's 100 percent up to you so if you want to do ultimate safari and gorillas you can do that you can do gorillas and you can do Kenya safari if you want that you can do, or you can do any of them individually. It's hundred percent up to you. So how many of your people that come will do all three at one time or just varies? I've never had anybody do all three. I'm the only one who does all three, but somebody's going to eventually some, somebody's going to say, I'll, I want to do all three and stay for all three, but no one has done that yet, Susan. Okay. So it's about a third of the people. About uh, most of the people who do the gorillas do one of the safaris with it. Okay. So most people are doing two. You know, we have a lot of people do a safari by themselves. We've had one person do the gorillas by themselves, but it's a long ways to go for just the gorillas. I mean, All not right. that the gorillas are not worth it. Their gorillas are 100% worth it. But you're already over there. You might as well do a safari too. Questions? All right. If nobody has any questions, I'm going to say thank you all for being here. Thank you for being part of this. And we'll see, you, see most of you on Monday night to talk about the ultimate photo safari. You will all get all three of the talks, the recordings for these on Wednesday. I will just gang up all the recordings, send you all three recordings at once. Anybody else? No, thank you so much. That was great. You're welcome. All right.
Happy Thank Friday, you. everybody. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you soon uh, in the camera store or on one of our classes or adventures. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.